Now, another priority is for us to understand how people actually use water and how climate change and the way we use land can affect the availability of water in the future. Dr Richard Harding is from the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology and one of the coordinators of the European Network of Researchers called WATCH, and that's short for Water, W-A-T, and Global Change. And he's with us now. Hello, Richard. Hello, good evening. Thanks for joining us on The Naked Scientist. Hello. Now, as we've just heard from Eugene Cluter, um, having clean fresh water is something that many of us take for granted but it, it's certainly not the case that everywhere on the planet they have access to um, healthy safe water so um, what are the main problems linked to the availability of water and our uses of it well there's many problems linked to the the, the uses of water and we've heard a lot about them just now but uh, we have to realize that the majority of the water use that's used across the world is actually used for agriculture. Something like 90% of the water that is extracted in these dams and actually from the, the aquifers, the underground aquifers, are, are used for irrigating crops. So nine out of ten litres of water we use is for food, essentially? Yes, that's right. That's obviously an essential purpose, particularly at the moment we're having to feed something like six billion people there are many, many people, particularly in developing countries, who don't have enough to eat. And in the future, we're going to have to feed perhaps 9 billion people by the mid part of this century. So we are looking at needing a lot more water to be able to feed all those people. So if, if water for agriculture is such a, an important and huge part of, of the, the global water cycle, um, if you like, is that what you at Watch um, are focusing on? Yes, what we're trying to do in WATCH is firstly to identify exactly how much water we have. And quite surprisingly, it's quite difficult to get a picture across all the world that we trust of what the rainfall is, what the evaporation is, and what the runoff in the rivers is. And then beyond that, we have to look at what the consumption patterns are now for agriculture, for domestic water use, for industry, and what they might be in the future and what the consequences of that might be. 